وصحابه وأولاده وأزواجه وزريته وأهل بيته وأصحاره وأنصاره وأشيائه ومحبه وأمته وعلينا معكم أجمعين يا أرحم الراحيم قال ابن الوحاب نجدي who was born in the tribe called Al-Tamim we would be discussing about him inshallah ta'ala wa rahman whether this man how much fitna he caused in the ummah and his followers till now using the petro dollars how they are spreading the evil belief just because they have money so while starting this I would be quoting a hadith from Sahih Bukhari those who are interested can take down the address inshallah here is the reference of this hadith book number 17 17 hadith number 147 147 Sahih Bukhari English translation done by the Salafi called Masood Khan The hadith is like this, the translation. Narrated Ibn Umar that Prophet said, O oh Allah, bless our Sham and our Yemen. Sham is Syria. So Prophet made a dua for these two places, Syria and Yemen. People said, our Najat as well. The Prophet again made a dua and said, O oh Allah, bless our Sham and Yemen people again said our Najat as well that means Prophet was not praying for this place Najat but people were telling him to pray so two times Prophet did not pray third time what did Prophet said on that the Prophet said there will appear earthquake and afflictions and from there will come out the side of the head of Satan book number 17 Hadith number 147, Sahih Bukhari, English translation online. We would be later analyzing this hadith that how the Wahhabi liars, they say that Najat is Iraq. And inshallah, I will give five evidence to show where is Najat. Not one or two or three, five evidence, inshallah. And I hope after this it will be very clear for our Sunni brothers and sisters that Najat is the present Saudi Wahhabi Kingdom of Arabia, Saudi Arabia. Now my dear brothers, after this hadith, it is very clear that Prophet did not like Najat. He told and warned Muslim, his Ummah, whom he loved, that from this place fitna is going to come, affliction is going to come. He warned Muslims because Prophet he was sent as a warner so he warned Muslims that see near the time of Qiyamah this all is going to happen so you Muslims should be very cautious of this region now let us take another hadith this is again from Sahih Bukhari book number 55 hadith number 558 the English translation which is online it says narrated Ibn Abbas the Prophet said I have been made victorious over As-Saba that is the easterly wind and the people of Ad were destroyed by Ad-Dabur that is the westerly wind narrated Abu Sa'id Ali radi Allah ta'ala anhu sent a piece of gold to the Prophet who distributed it among four persons Al-Aqra bin Habis Al-Hanzili who was from the tribe of Mujasi Huayna bin Badr Al-Fazari Zayd Al-Tai who belonged to the tribe of Bani Nahban and Al-Kama bin Ulasa Al-Amir who belonged to the tribe of Bani Qilab so the Quraysh and the Ansar they became angry and said to Prophet he that is the Prophet gives the chief of Najad and does not give us the Prophet said I give them so as to attract their hearts to Islam 
So Prophet gave them money to the people of Najat. You have seen the hadith says it so as to invite. That means since beginning these people of Najat, their heart was away from Islam. Let us continue. The Prophet said, okay, that I give them so as to attract their hearts. That is, attract the hearts of the people of Najat towards Islam. Then a man with sunken eyes, prominent cheeks and a raised forehead, a thick beard and a shaven head came in front of the Prophet and said, Be afraid of Allah, O Muhammad. See this man. From another hadith, the name of this man was Zul Khawasir. Please take a note. The name of this man was Zul Khawasir. What did he say to Prophet? said, be afraid of Allah of Muhammad So this man was telling Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that he was not just. The Prophet said, oh, who would obey Allah if I disobeyed him? Allah Akbar. So Prophet told him, if you are telling me that I am not obeying Allah, so who else will obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is it fair that Allah has trusted all the people of earth to me while you do not trust me? Subhanallah. This man who was, whose name was Zul Khawasir who was from the tribe of Bani Tamim. Take a note. Who was from the tribe of Bani Tamim. He said to Prophet that O Prophet be trustful. This man is bi-unanimous, is a munafiq, is a kafir because he called Prophet Muhammad is a, as an unjust person. So Prophet told him that if you are telling me that I am unjust, then who will be just? Allah has made me just. Somebody who the narrator says was Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the sword of Allah. He requested Prophet to let him chop that man's head off. Remember brothers and sisters, in Islam the punishment for anyone who shows disrespect to Prophet Muhammad sallam is death penalty in Islamic state. So the companion of the Prophet asked Prophet that please order me so that I can chop this man's head. But Prophet prevented him. Subhanallah, Prophet is rahmatullil ali, he is a mercy. When this man left, Prophet said, Among the offspring of this man will, will be some who will recite the Quran, but the Quran will not reach beyond their throats. That is, they will recite like parrots and it, they will not understand it, nor will they act upon it. And they will renegade from the religion. That means they will go far from the religion. But what will they do? They will recite Quran and as an arrow goes through the game's body. They will kill the Muslims but will not disturb the idolaters. Subhanallah. Prophet told, what are the symptoms of this man? And then Prophet said, if I should live up to their time, I will kill them as the people of Ad were killed. So the last part of the hadith, Prophet told, the symptoms of the man. Prophet said, there will come people from his offspring, from this man Zul Khawasir, who was from the area of Najad, from the tribe of Bani Tamim. Prophet said, his people are going to recite Quran, but is not going to go below their throat. That means they will not follow Quran, they will not understand Quran. We have seen in today's world, Istawa ala al arsh Okay, and their stupid understanding. We have seen this Wahhabis, this Prophet. And then what did he say? They will kill the Muslims, but they will not disturb the idolaters. So my dear brothers and sisters, we are from that region. In another hadith, he told the particular tribe and the symptoms of those people. Now let us go back to history, for which you don't need any hadith book. You don't need any tafsir book. If you are a sane person, you can check this. Who was this man in this ummah upon whom everything fits? The one who was born in the 
region of Najad as Prophet told, in the same tribe of Bani Tamim as Prophet told, and who has this characteristic? Which characteristics? That he and his followers are going to recite Quran, but Quran is not going to go below their throat, and they are going to kill Muslims, but they will not disturb idolaters. My dear brothers and sisters, go, do research. Do research in Arabian Peninsula who was this man and you will find there was only one such man Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najdi Tamimi who was born in the Christian era <coughs> 1700 in the region of Najad in the small village called Uwaina in the tribe called Bani Tamim. What did he do? Allahu Akbar. The thing is, all this prophecy, prophecy, prophecy of Prophet has suited on him. But we have to cross-check the third and the most important prophecy. Did he kill Muslim? Did he leave the idolaters? Do uh, his followers follow the same thing which Prophet said, that they recite Quran but does not go below their heart? We have to analyze this to make this thing very clear. My dear brothers and sisters, you have to only read the history of Taif. Those who are well versed in internet can google history of Taif, T-A-I-F, Taif, or massacre in Taif, or what happened in Saudi Arabia in 1924, or you can read any book written by any Muslim, non-Muslim, Jew, Christian, anyone about the history of Arabian Peninsula from the year 1700 to 1950. Read any book, any article, anything. You will find this man, he killed innocent Muslims. He said, he used, misused the hadith. He said, in one hadith, which Prophet Sallallahu said, when the war, when the jihad was going on, that kill them, which also many non-Muslims misuse, he said, kill them unless they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Kill them. There is a hadith like that. So what is the meaning of that hadith? That this hadith was only applicable at that time when the war was already going on. For example, two armies are in the battlefield. What will your commander say? Kill the opposite army unless they uh, uh, give up. They raise their hand and they give up. We don't go in armed battlefield to hug each other. So this hadith is only relevant at that time. Many non-Muslims will also bring you this hadith. Please take a note. It was only for that particular time. When two tribes, when Muslims were, for, were fighting non-Muslims, there was a jihad because the non-Muslims broke the peace treaty. There was a peace treaty signed between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. The non-Muslims broke that treaty and you can see this in tafsir of Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9. So at that time it was said. So this man, Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najdi, used that hadith and said, these Muslims of the Arabian Peninsula, they are not real Muslims. I have to kill them. He killed them. And if you want to check this, I said earlier, read any book of history written for the year 1700 to 1950 for Arabian Peninsula. Any book. Google massacre in Taif. Google history of Saudi Arabia 1700 to 1950. Read the book how Arabian Peninsula got the name Saudi Arabia and you will get all of them saying the same story. How uh, Hajj was not performed for four years, Allahu Akbar. After Yajid, we all know the Yajid and Palit, the Yajid, the misguided one. After him, the second fitna in Islam was this by Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najdi. During the time of Yajid, the cover over the Kaaba was burnt, and during the time of Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najdi, Masjids were vacant in Medina and Makkah. Blood was flowing in Medina. The irony is people come in chat room and they do not read their history. It is not very old, just 200 years back. Blood was flowing in the streets of Medina. Muslim women were raped. Children were thrown into fire. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because this man, he revolted against the Usmania Islamic Empire, Ottoman Empire. The Britishers, they told him, if you revolt against the Usmani Empire, the Ottoman Empire, 
which is named after the third Khalifa of Islam, Usman bin Affan Jami ul Quran, Radiallahu Taala Anhu. Then we are going to help you in establishing. So this man, he made a treaty with the king, a, a, a leader of a caravan called Saud. His name was Saud. So this man, Ab, Ibn Abdul Wahab Najdi, made friendship with Saud, and they made this plan to revolt against the Ottoman Empire. They succeeded later on in the third attempt. Before that, they killed innocent Muslims. Now let us see whether some what are the objections. Some Wahhabis say, "Oh, this Najd is Iraq." My dear brothers and sisters, now I am going to present four hadiths, five evidence, insha Allah, which says, and you all can cross-check. You all are more intelligent whether this is right or not. The first evidence. Is all of you can Google Najd N A J D. That is the most easiest way, and you will see it is the central region of Saudi Arabia. That is the most easy, but of course it is not authentic. You will say the Wahhabi say, oh, the whole Google is wrong. Fine, that is a stupid belief. Just for first evidence, you can see N A J D Najd. It is the central region of Saudi Arabia. Fine, that can be wrong. Whole Google is against them. Now, please take a note of the second evidence, which is most authentic. Why it is most authentic? Because Wahhabis will tell you that oh, in that time Najd was something different. In today's time, Najd is something different. That is why Google is now giving you Najd is Saudi Arabia, but during the time of Prophet, it was something else. That is how they play games. So now here is a hadith from Sahih Muslim, in which Prophet explained what is Najd. Very clear. He told the difference between Najd and Iraq. I am giving you the hadith from Sahih Muslim. First hadith, the English translation done by a Wahhabi uh, is like this. Okay, since it is a Wahhabi. The man whose English translation is available online, the Sahih Bukhari, all he is a Pakistani Wahhabi who went to Saudi Arabia, and then he was given this uh, uh, task of translating. The Hadith is like this: translation. Abu Zubair heard Zubair bin Abdullah radiyallahu taala anhu as saying. As he was asked about the place for entering upon the state of Ihram, that is the point of Mecca, when people from different areas of the world they gather to perform Hajj at one particular place, they have to remove their normal clothes and put this cloth of Hajj, which is called Ihram. So he wanted to know about this place. So he said. I heard, and I think he, car he carried it directly from the Rasulullah, that for the people of Medina, Zul Hulayfa is the place for entering upon the state of Ihram. That means those people who are from Medina, when they reach a point called Zul Hulayfa, there they have to change their clothes. Fine. For the people coming through Syria. It is Zuhfa. It is Juhfa. Okay, that is a place. And for the people of Iraq, it is Zabt al Irk. For the people of Iraq, it is Zabt al Irk. And for the people of Najd, it is Karn. And for the people of Yemen, it is Yala Malam. My dear brothers. This hadith is very clear that for our blessed prophet Najd was different from Iraq because he fixed two different points for people of Najd and Iraq. Had Najd meant the same as Iraq, prophet would have not told. He in fact told two different points. Sahih Muslim Kitab al Hajj, the book of pilgrimage, book number seven, hadith number two thousand six hundred sixty-six. There are also hadiths similar in Sunan Nasa'i and other books of hadiths in which Prophet clearly demarcated the area of Najd and Iraq. 
So the Wahhabis cannot play this song that Najd is Iraq. And of course, you all have seen in Google what is Najd. You all have seen it. And after this, we also need to see other evidences. As we said, we will be looking into other evidences also that what is the proof of Najd not being Iraq. The, the word meaning of this Arabic word Najd is high ground. Uh, you know, an elevated area, high ground. If you look atlas, it will be very clear. If you look at the atlas, it will be very clear. Open your atlas, the geographical atlas. See the region of Iraq and see the region of Saudi Arabia. You will find the central region of Saudi Arabia is the whole elevated ground. You can see this also in the photograph on Google also. So this is the third proof that the uh, uh, the Najat is Saudi Arabia. Also, the medieval Islamic geographical, for example, Ibn Khurradilah and Al Masalik Al Mamalik, these were the great geographic, uh, geographical, uh, you know, people, and the geographers who made map of that region. All of them they limited the extent of Najat at Wadi Al Rumma or to the deserts to the south of Al Madai. There is no indication that the places in which the second wave of sedition, the Ridda, such as Kufa and Basra were associated in the mind for the Muslims with the term Najat. And the fourth and the fifth is, is very clear, the hadith which say about, in which Prophet uh, uh, pointed towards east and said, the fitna will come from here. In fact, this hadith supports our point. This hadith supports our point. A straight line, if you look at the map, drawn to the east of Al Madina Al Munawwara, does not pass anywhere near Iraq, but it passes some distance to the south of Riyadh, the present capital of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, with, through the exact center of Najd. You can open your map and look at this. My dear brothers, so we have seen Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najd al Tamimi, who was born in the tribe of Tamim in the area of Najd in the year 1700, whose, whose progeny, as the Prophet said, they will recite Quran but it will not go below their throat. They will kill Muslims but leave idolaters. Now you all can see this, what happened in 1992. This is very important to mention. The late Wahhabi Sheikh Ibn Baz, what he did, he made a fatwa in 1968 against the uh, president of Egypt, who was Nasser. President Nasser invited few of the Russian soldiers for the construction of Aswan Dam. So this Ibn Baz issued a fatwa that this is an act of kufr because you have invited uh, non-Muslim engineers for the construction of dam. Fine, well said. My dear brothers and sisters, same Ibn Baz issued a fatwa in 1992 that not only USA forces can come and stay in Saudi Arabia, but they should also get full infrastructure support. They killed Muslims in Iraq. Kuwait. Remember the hadith which we have just seen from Sahih Bukhari. They would be hard upon believers and very soft upon the idolaters and non-believers. So we have seen the first instance in which Ibn Abdul Wahhab Najdi killed innocent Muslims. We don't speak here with our with logic. Open any book of history written by an Indian historian, a Pakistani historian, a Yemeni, an Egyptian, a Syrian, a Indonesian, a American, anyone and see what happened. Except a Wahhabi scholar because now they are even changing the history books. After fabricating books like Riyadh Salihin, they are now even trying to change the history. So we don't, don't speak with our desire. Speak and go and read history and come back. The Mufti of Makkah at that time, 
احمد زہران المفتی شیخ الاسلام آف دیٹ ٹائم ہی روٹ این آرٹیکل کالڈ فتنت الوہابیہ ہو آر اس مین ہی واز ناٹ اے نارمل مین شیخ الاسلام آف اس ٹائم احمد زہران اشافی ہو آر دا مفتی ہی روٹ اے بک کالڈ فتنت الوہابیہ وچ ہیز بین ٹرانسلیٹڈ ان ٹو انگلش اینڈ اٹ از آن لائن in which he told that the brother of Ibn Abdul Wahab Najidi whose name was Suleiman was the first person to refute and his own father also refuted his own father and also one of the teachers of uh, uh, Ibn Abdul Wahab Najidi one of the teachers of Ibn Abdul Wahab Najidi whose name was Al-Ashi Al-Misri Uh, his own Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul uh, Abdul Latif his own Sheikh he was the one to warn Muslims you can check this Fitnatul Wahhabiya by Ahmad Zalhan Ash-Shafi he wrote a book Fitnatul Wahhabiya so my dear brothers he killed innocent Muslims in 1992 Ibn Abbas invited the American soldiers now the last thing before we wrap this before we wrap this last thing we all know what is Starbucks of coffee shops the owner clearly says that Israel should exist Palestine should not exist he gives 20% of his earnings to the state of Israel you can check this online Today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made ilm very easy to cross check who is speaking lie or not. So this Starbucks, they have been invited to make a tall structure, a coffee shop, where? Right in heart of Islam, Makkah. Subhanallah. Remember the hands of Prophet, they will be soft towards idolaters and mushrikeen, but they will be harsh towards Muslims. Remember the hadith and see how true it is. So my dear brothers, I would just recite one more translation of the hadith and we shall end this. This again happens to be from Sahih Bukhari. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Book 17. This is from Sahih Bukhari. Please take a note. Volume number 9. Book number 88. Hadith number 239. I am repeating it. Volume number 9, book number 88, hadith number 239. The English translation says, Narrated Anas ibn bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet said, The Jal will come and he will put a camp at a place outside Medina. And Medina will shake three times. Whereupon every kafir and hypocrite will go out of the Medina towards him. Subhanallah, Sahih Bukhari, Volume 9, Book 88, Hadith 239. Narrated Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, the Prophet said, the Jal will come and he will put a camp outside the city of Medina and the city of Medina will shake three times whereupon every kafir disbeliever and hypocrite minafik will go out towards him so my dear brothers these people you look at the shara of this hadith these kafir and munafik living in the city of Medina will go and join the army of the Dajjal and it is very clearly understood who these people will be so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be united towards the cause of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah Remember the definition of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, those people who follow any of the four schools of fiqh, the, Shaq, the Hanafi, the, the Maliki, the Shafi or Hamli, those who base their narrations upon the Ijma, the Qiyas, the Sunnah and Quran al-Kareem. These are the four sources, Quran, Sunnah, Ijma and Qiyas.